Off season week 13. Hope everyone's doing well. And I don't know if I should be counting my weeks into off season or my weeks into prep because this sh season is so short with the Olympia coming in October. And I, I was planning on maybe doing the Texas Pro, which would be a solid show. Um, for one, I picked these shows based on, for one, I, I'd love to do a sh show in my home state. But also the Texas Pro has been a phenomenal production and I, I want to be able to truly capture the accuracy of my physique on stage and that production crew's done a great job on having like awesome stage lights and photography, videography. So it's kind of a reason why it's prompting me. But it's 31 weeks away, when you say it like that, it just doesn't leave much time left for off season, which is surprising. But um, And then after that, I've talked around the idea of maybe doing Italy which would just be cool to go to Italy. I've never competed internationally, and kind of one thing I might want to check off my box before I'm done competing. But regardless, where we are in the moment is uh, I am currently 244 pounds, waking up faster. We can see the visuals here, and it's just shocking me kind of every week that I still stay very conditioned. I look back even like six weeks ago when I started this push phase, and I was 236 and now coming up like eight pounds and man, there's just minimal condition change. Um, it's just been very lean progress, even with the food increase I had made and body weight went up like 1.6 pounds last week, but the average weight was about 1.2, which is a very reasonable rate that I'm just gonna keep it moving as long as the visuals make sense and they, they, ha they are thus far, so. As we go to today's session, I'll explain a little bit more about what the current plan is and what's going on, but I am training push today. It's my push B session, which is a slight more bias to shoulders and triceps. Still have chest work in it, in, uh, it as well, but we'll walk through the session and give you some insights. Let's jump into it. First exercise day is my prime lateral raise. Always starts with side delts on both push days. Can't have big enough side delts, and it's not gonna limit any of your pressing. So, it makes a lot of sense to put it first for bodybuilding needs, build out the x frame On this lift, doing four sets, and my last set, my fourth set, I do do some partials out of, out of the bottom. So we could count it as five sets if you want to, set extender. Um, for this setup, I do a single arm. For one, I'm able to rotate my torso a little bit into the side I'm training. So rather than moving that arm straight out to the side, kind of going more like 15 to 20 degrees in front of me. It's more the scapular plane, but I find I get better uh, shoulder stabilization that way. Rotator cuff is a bit better position to output. So, um, and you get like less binding than uh, when the shoulder is directly out to the side. I do use the grips and one thing on that handle that I grab and I put in some internal rotation torque. It just further makes you a, a more uh, stable shoulder to output with. Um, I will say right away, guys, it is a little easier to output going single arm, but it doesn't matter. It's The more thing is that I get a better connection with the side delt that way. Um, as far as like the cam setup, I do put it on the cam setting on a five, so it loads a bit more out of the bottom. Um, this one progress wise, like, I, you know, I did 335 last time for 13. I went up to 345. I had eight on my first set. Dropped back down to 335. And across all my other sets, able to add a one rep progression. So, man, bodybuilding, it's simple. I, I get tired of sometimes the, the education world out there because they're just overcomplicating the bodybuilding process. And here's the thing, just in the off season, progressively increase your body weight and progressively get stronger in the gym. Get stupid fucking strong. Like if you wanna add new muscle tissue, you're gonna to have to be just a bigger overall person moving bigger overall weights than you ever have before. That's the simplicity to it. Then the little nitty ditty details are lesser extent. Progress that body weight, but don't get fat. <laughs> There's no reason to do an excessive surplus and get excessively fat. It'll just end your off season early. But that are some of the big takeaways. Some other just quick takeaways too is prioritize recovery, your sleep, your stress management, make your bodybuilding routine like it's prep. Go to bed at the same time, wake at the same time, meals at the same time, train at the same time. 
the more monotonous you can make your day, the better you're gonna be at creating predictability and consistency and results. And that's gonna make you better in the off seasons. It's why preps get more efficient because you're locking it in more. Lock it in in the off season. All right guys, moving on to the hammer strength incline press. So this is my more shoulder biased press movement. I've had recurrent issues trying to press overhead, so I just don't even do it. I just pick like a good steep incline, train the upper pec, but also it, you're absolutely gonna put enough priority to the front delt doing it. I do three sets here. First set's gonna be my heaviest, so last time, and I count this up funny like it's a 45 pound bar, because that's how my mind works like a power lifter. So I did 475 for eight. When I have something like that, to take the smallest load progression, because adding another rep on is a huge increase progression wise. So instead, like when it's lower rep in compound work, I'll add on a two and a half pound plate. So I'll go up to 480, try to do a rep match. And if the extra rep is there, I'll take it, right? I'll go for nine, but at least I made a little bit of progression. And on the higher rep sets is when I'll maybe keep the load the same and go for the extra rep. Or that would be in, in the case of like, an isolation exercise with like a dumbbell. You know, it's, it's a lot easier to take the rep progression over moving, say, from a 45 pound to a 50 pound dumbbell. So the, the percentage increase is what you're really looking at, the smallest percentage, like take that. If there's a little extra to come, so be it. But we'll do three sets here and I'll, I'll drop the load back with each subsequent set and get after it. Okay, so end up rep matching on that last movement. All good. Probably ask like, well, what do you do if you don't beat your numbers? That's okay. The idea is it is to progress, but remember that last workout would have had to cause the adaptation for you now to be able to express that greater amount of strength. So you might just not have the full progression come to fruition yet. So just forcing the progression to happen by changing your form, lifting faster, trying to put just all out crazy effort and you know amp, amp it up the metal or whatever. Uh, training harder doesn't mean you're getting a better stimulus. So standardize your form, train as hard as you're normally effort level, which should be pretty much all the way there. And if the rep's there, you take it. If not, it's all good. That doesn't mean you didn't have a good stimulus to keep growing. So you're not gonna beat everything and that's okay. Doesn't mean you didn't do your job for the day. Your job is to make sure you're still training with full range of motion, giving the right effort level. And doing that over time will lead to the logbook organically progressing up. Now, next movement is a hammer strength. It's kind of like the decline press. Um, I use it for my close grip tricep press. Dips are terrible for me. I, I can't get into a lot of good like shoulder extension. And with this movement, I can take a really close grip. It allows that wrist to translate in and that elbow stays flared out. So ends in turn, it biases the tricep a lot. Of course, you're gonna get some like lower pec and some delt, some front delt. But definitely doing this one like lights up the tricep. Doing three sets here and that'll be my tricep compound movement for the day. Right, the tricep press went really well. Matched my top set. I did add a rep on my two sets after. So solid progression. Um, now moving on to isolation movement. So I do keep this session pretty time efficient. So what I do is I go back and forth between a prime pec fly. So I get a little bit of actual just overall pec work in on this day. Uh, folks, just, just isolation. So I set the cams up on a five. So I get hit right away and load in that stretch position. Um, and then on my tricep push down is what I, uh, not a push down, sorry. I do an overhead cable extension today. My other push day, I do a push down. So rather than do like both movements on both days, I keep it very efficient. I just do more sets of the same thing on today. So I'll do five sets on a pec fly and five sets on a tricep um, overhead extension. And it's just been time efficient. I just, I used to do more exercises for, I'm just wondering like, why am I doing more exercises? I can just stay in the same one, get my volume 
in and I'm still having productive output doing more sets. Um, now this last training block I had, I was doing four sets in each. I have moved up to doing five sets now on these because recovery has been good. And I noticed a little bit slower progression on my chest tricep area and where I really want it comparatively to back and legs. So that volume hasn't shifted in this block. I just purely adjusted up chest volume, tricep volume, and some side delt volume. So we'll see how recovery goes. I'll run that volume for the block. I can assess it. And then for the next block, I'll, I'll reassess and then adjust from there. So that's how I've been doing my, my volume is just you know, holding it steady for a block, seeing how that, how that uh, goes you know, recovery wise and also progression wise, assess at the end and then move up from there. Rep range on these 10 to 15. Um, I'll let the reps drop as, as load stays the same. If I get towards the bottom of that rep range, I'll then drop the load and kick back up in reps. So where are my plans at currently? Diet wise, I haven't made an adjustment in two weeks. I had that increase in food I made, which was about 40 grams of carbohydrates. So I'm sitting on train days, 540 grams of carbs, 55 grams of fat, about 350 grams of protein. On non-train days, protein's the same. The fats come up to about 70 grams and my carbs come down to 250. Why that shift in fats? Nothing special, there's nothing science or don't overthink it. Someone asked me about that. Uh, usually Renee and I, on our off days, two times a week, uh, for our evening meal, we might do something like salmon or a steak. So fats are just in place there because I just bring in like a fatty meal just for something that we enjoy. Those little shifts in carbs and fats, it's not a big deal in the picture of how much carbon fat is present. So it kind of comes down preferential wise. And um, that shift in food is enough to where also like I'll see kind of almost linear body weight increase across those days. Like, again, I trained for like two hours. I think I've talked about this last time. And then I have cardio after I do this session too. So the energy expenditure is actually pretty high on this day. But anyway, that wraps up my um, tricep, my pec work for the day. I'm gonna go on to do the same thing, going back and forth between my calf work on the leg press, because that is the best spot to output. We have a donkey calf raise I can't go heavy enough on. And then today I also do abdominals on the glute ham raise, which is solid because when you come back on the glute ham raise, it loads the LinkedIn position which is great for hypertrophy. Uh, so a lot of your other ab exercises, it loads real hard in the short position. So I alternate between that and like a rope crunch on my other, other push day. So go back and forth between these. I do four sets. So total for the week, there's eight sets of calf and ab work uh, across. Okay, so I'm back home now. I couldn't uh, finish that session explanation at the gym. I ended up, uh, my mic went dead, <laughs> of course. Calves and abs did that. Did cardio post training. Just did five sets of one minute between the spin bike and the battle ropes. And that wrapped up the session. So overall, it was solid. It's the point where things are a bit more stabilized with you know food and gear and everything to where the and I've been on this program for a while. So I made a few changes, you know, earlier on the with just neurological adaptations occurring and uh, when you have new movements and exercise orders you're kind of like feeling the waters out so like those initial big increases are already taken so now it's like chipping away at reps and loads it is what it is so uh, it was a good session and that wraps it up really guys i you know just uh, another thing i want to bring up around just improving because we we talked about this earlier was putting priority to your bodybuilding if you really want to get good. Like when I was earlier on, like around this time when I was trying to turn pro, and I just remember I was, you know, working full time at the hospital. I was coaching people on the side. I was doing my, you know, animal um, sponsored content as well, trying to grow my Instagram and then, and then bodybuilding, right? It was just nonstop all day long. And, you know, thinking back at the time, I was like, man, I'm doing everything I need to be doing to be at my best. And that was my situation that I just had to be in, right? I, I had to work. I had to do those things. But it wasn't optimal. 
And so I was always in pursuit of trying to build my lifestyle to be more optimal. And it can be easy once you do start up your coach and you get into coaching and bring on competitors that it's hard to say no to client work. And you keep taking on more and more work, but there's a lag time there before it really builds up. And you have to plan out your calendar year um, with your own competitive um, aspirations in mind because when you have that many people, I've had moments in prep where I had too many clients and everything suffers, like my quality of prep, also my client uh, quality of work giving back to clients. So like, like this year, I've continued to try to make my life surround around bodybuilding, and fortunately I, I am, and I can pull back on my client load. And, and you have to take comfort in knowing that you're going to be okay financially. Like if you and the clients are going to keep coming back, and you're going to have that flow because you get scared owning your own business to reduce the client load once you got it to a certain point. You feel like you're taking steps back, and that's not the case at all. It just depends what you need out of your bodybuilding. Right. If you're trying to do this to a high level, you need to prioritize it while you're in it. So that's one thing for me. Like I've keep pulling back my client load, knowing what's to come in the future. Like I even had like a guest pose request like eight weeks out from the show. And it's like, oh man, that would be exciting. And you have these opportunities. But I've turned it down just because I know just even traveling for me could take away a week of prep. And I, I just can't sacrifice that. So Take, I don't know where you are in your journey. If you're the person working the two jobs like I was, or you're in a position where you're coaching and you have the flexibility to pull back on clients, maybe you don't have you know aspirations to be a career level bodybuilder, but always if you are, put it as priority because the time period you have to be successful in this, it is a really short window and weeks fly by. Like when we talk about, hey, I'm 31 weeks out, every week that you're not nailing those variables because of life happens or work happens are weeks that you're not taking steps forward. So anyway, put it as a priority if, if that is something that you need to do. But anyway, guys, thank you always for tuning in, and I will talk to you next time.